Hey friends, thanks for tuning in. Today, I thought I would share a few tips on my newest strategy for saving money on groceries. And I'm also going to show you some low-cost meals that I've been making. Later on, I'll be creating a delicious ginger sauce that is super easy to make and will go a long way in creating meals. I'll be sharing with you all the ways that you can use that sauce to create delicious meals for your family. But first of all, let's talk about how I've been saving money on food lately. And I'm saying lately because as life changes and our schedules change, we have to come up with new strategies that work for us. And I think every new season in life requires a new strategy. Someone with a busy family is certainly going to have a different plan from someone like myself that is only cooking for one. I do a lot of the extreme budget challenges, but sometimes my viewers ask me if I buy in bulk and if I could do some videos focusing on that. And in my own life, that's how I save money on food. I buy my major staples once every six to nine months, and then I mostly just focus on perishables and fresh food. I used to do weekly shopping for things I wanted, but I noticed my grocery bill was starting to creep up, so I came up with this new plan. During the first week of the month, I do my largest shopping trip and focus on any perishable staples like tortillas and bread. I purchase any sauces I might want or other staples that are not already in my pantry. I also purchase some fresh food. I've been trying to keep my first week's budget below $100. Then for weeks two through four, I've been spending between $10 and $14 a week on fresh vegetables that are on sale. And this has actually been kind of fun for me just to see how low I can get my weekly fresh foods. This week, my goal was 10 bucks and I really needed romaine lettuce. I use it for salads, tacos, and wraps, but it was $4.99, so that was too much of my budget. So instead, I was eyeing these big boxes of spinach that they had for $2 each. I do love spinach in a lot of different ways, but I do get it frequently, and I also noticed that they had a spring mix, which I almost never buy, also for $2. I'll be eating a lot of salads this week and I'll try to find some new ways to use this. One of my viewers told me that she went to a fancy restaurant and they served a beet salad with ranch dressing and she said it was so good and so now I'm wanting to try that but I don't think it's going to be this week. They had these Asian salad kits, two packs for $2.99 and even though I'm purchasing some green and red cabbage, I still think I'm going to go ahead and get this because it's going to make for two super easy dinners for me. I'll just add some protein to this that I purchased in week one. I also got some broccoli, some zucchini, and a couple bananas. So my fresh food haul for the week was $10.80 and again, this is what I got. I decided to try the spring mix in some bean tacos and I thought they were really good. I do love the crispiness of romaine lettuce, but it's nice to have a change every now and then. Tacos are a go-to quick meal for me. I'm always making them with different ingredients and they always taste so delicious. Since I started work again, I have very limited time for planning, which I'm sure lots of my viewers can relate to, which is why I came up with this plan. It means I only have to do some intensive planning once a month for that first grocery shopping, and I found that it also has an added benefit that I'm actually saving more on the items that I buy in multiples, and I'll talk about that more next week. I wanted to share how I'm using the fresh food with my existing pantry staples. If you guys remember last week, I got this big bag of asparagus for $2. I still have some of this left over this week. So I used that with some of my zucchini and a few tomatoes that I had left over from the prior week. And I added some olives and sun-dried tomatoes, which are items that I would purchase in week one if I needed them. But I actually already had some left over from a couple months ago. And I added this to pasta. When I stocked my pantry staples, I tried to get a variety of pasta. But shells are actually one of my least favorite pastas for some reason. But I did decide to go ahead and use them because I'm trying to use up all of my pantry staples. And it turned out really good. This is one of those meals that I make at least some kind of variation on every week. Not only is it tasty, but I can throw it together in about 20 minutes, which I love. You guys have seen me make these similar dishes before, but let me know if you want me to write out the recipe for you. 
Sometimes I like to mix it up a bit and add in Asian sauces to the pasta along with whatever vegetables I get on sale. Here I've also added in protein. I wanted to show you these black chickpeas that I picked up. I had never tried these before and they were at my local market so I got these last week. I feel like these are inferior to the white chickpeas. They're firmer and much smaller and they did turn the water black just like the black lentils did. However, I love the flavor of the black lentils but if I'm comparing these to the regular chickpeas, I do like the regular better. I'm going to use these on top of a green salad. I think they're going to look beautiful and taste good too. And I'm using a glass bowl that I got a while back at Dollar Tree. I've always thought green salads look so pretty in a glass bowl. I'll be eating lots of salad this week because of these $2 greens that I got. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of the red cabbage for color. And then you can see the difference between the yellow and the black and I just kept cooking these but they weren't getting any uh, larger or any softer so I think that this is the end result and I thought I would use both black and white chickpeas just because I had a few of these white chickpeas left over in the fridge that I needed to use up and I thought those would look nice together and then I just added a few of these diced tomatoes that I had to use up and then I'm using a red wine vinaigrette. This just has red wine vinegar, olive oil, uh, maple syrup, or you can use sugar and also some Dijon mustard, which is also optional. I usually buy a bag of avocados during my big shopping trip and then I keep them in the fridge and they last me a lot longer that way. I'll take one out as soon as I want it to ripen. Otherwise, they'll ripen very slowly in the fridge and I do love them on salad. I posted a picture of this on my Instagram last week. I think when I made this for dinner, I love this salad. It was delicious. I had the same salad a few times throughout the week. Last week, I talked about how I got ginger on sale and then I used it for a seasoning base for two soups that I made. It's such an affordable seasoning and a little goes a long way. So today, I thought it would be fun to make a ginger sauce, which is something you can use along with a protein and some rice and a vegetable and have a super easy and inexpensive dinner. I cut off a piece of ginger and diced it up and I'll use part of this for the ginger sauce and I'll put the rest in my next soup that I make. I have a recipe that I've had forever and I haven't made it in so many years and I'm looking at this and I'm realizing it has way too much sugar in it for my current self. So I think I'm going to modify this recipe. I was also doing a little research on some of the most popular ginger sauce recipes and kind of seeing what their ingredients were. Sometimes it's fun to quickly scan through the ingredients list of recipes to see all the variations. This can be especially helpful if you don't have all of the ingredients for a recipe. For example, here I'm seeing that this person used white vinegar instead of rice vinegar and a couple of these recipes added lemon, which is going to add a brightness to the dish. For my recipe, I'm focused on minimal ingredients in order to keep the cost down. Really, all you need is the ginger, some sugar, vinegar, and soy sauce. Everything beyond that is optional. It's nice if you have some cornstarch to thicken the sauce, but sugar in sauces will thicken it on its own. I've made plenty of Asian sauces just using sugar and it gets to a nice sticky texture that sticks to the protein. But I'll be using some cornstarch today. Garlic is a completely optional ingredient. Some people like it in their ginger sauce and some people don't. My original recipe did not include garlic. I'm just adding it because I got a great deal on this recently. So I have a lot of it and also just because I do love garlic. But if you want a nice, strong, unadulterated ginger flavor, then just leave the garlic out. I'm going to start with two tablespoons of vinegar, which is considerably less than my recipe called for, but I can always add more in later. And I'm using rice wine vinegar. And then I'm going to add in two tablespoons of low sodium Kikkoman soy sauce. This is my favorite soy sauce. I love the flavor of this. So I actually buy this in bulk and then put it in the little containers. And then for the water, I'm just going to add two tablespoons water. It's going to need a lot more, but I'll add that in when my 
sauce has started to thicken in the pan and then I'll just add in what is needed. If you want, you can throw this into a food processor to get a nice smooth consistency. However, I actually like the little chunks of ginger and garlic in mine and then I'm going to give this a taste test just to see where the sweetness and sour level is and it actually tastes perfect to me. Wow, someone in my family must be using a lot of cornstarch because I do not remember this being this low. I definitely need to add this to my grocery list. So I'm adding in one tablespoon of cornstarch. That'll get our sauce nice and thick. And then I'm just going to blend this together real good and then I'll heat this up on the pan until it thickens and then I'll add just as much water as it needs. For my protein, I'm using tofu, but you can use whatever you have. I was actually gonna pick up some chicken and make some for my son just to show you guys. However, I just haven't had time to get to the store. This is tofu that has been frozen and you can see how different it makes the texture. I actually used to do this a lot when I was younger, but for some reason I just kinda quit doing it. But as you can see, it makes it have a sponge-like texture and it's much, much easier to squeeze out the water after it's been frozen. My rules for tofu is that it be kind of chewy and freezing it is one way to get it that way. Another is just to make sure that it's cooked properly, you know, like either baking it or frying it, just to make sure that it doesn't have any water in it and then you get the nice texture and then it just takes on the flavor of whatever sauce you're using. But like I said, this uh, ginger sauce is good for any meat or any other protein. So like for meatballs, you could actually even put it on hamburger, um, pork, you know, really anything that you can think of. And I always use a firm tofu. I think I only have one recipe that calls for a soft tofu. I generally just don't like soft tofu, but that's just my personal preference. Soft tofu works really good in recipes where you want to boost the protein. For example, I have a lasagna recipe. I should probably make that on my channel sometime. It calls for soft tofu and spinach, and then you just roll it up in these lasagna noodles and bake it, and you really can't tell that it even has soft tofu in it. And I forgot to mention, but sometimes I do use cornstarch to make my tofu extra crispy for frying. However, on my day to day, I don't do that. I like to get dinner together within like 15 minutes. And so I don't usually use recipes like that where there are those extra steps. And if I am, it's usually on the weekend where I have a little more time. I think I have my ginger sauce where I want it to be. It might still be a little too thick. It does thicken more when it cools, so maybe having it slightly thinner than you want is best. This tastes so much better than the bottled ginger sauce that I occasionally buy. My son and I were discussing on whether to add sesame oil or not. I said no, but I noticed there were some recipes that added it, so I thought I would give it a try in a small container and see how I feel about it. And I do think that the sesame does kind of overshadow the flavor of the ginger. And don't get me wrong, I do love a good sesame sauce. It just happens to be my favorite sauce. However, my intent is to make ginger, not sesame sauce. So this is gonna be a hard no for me. And besides, we keep the costs down, by limiting the amount of ingredients. If you're frying up meat like chicken or pork, I would fry it first and then ladle some of the sauce into the pan at the very end to coat the protein because the sauce does have sugar in it so it can burn easily. And then I'm just gonna garnish this with some sesame seeds just because I love the way this looks. And also I am a huge fan of sesame seeds. I'm eating this tonight with some rice and broccoli. And of course I have my chili garlic sauce. 
This is such a good ginger sauce. It's perfectly balanced. And for me, it has the right amount of sweetness. And of course, now I'm wishing I would have made a bigger batch, but I wasn't sure since I haven't made this in so many years. This is so much better than the last jarred ginger sauce that I purchased. And obviously you can make this for just a fraction of the cost that you can purchase it. It's basically just the cost of the ginger and you probably have the rest of the ingredients already in your pantry. This would be a good sauce to can. In one of my videos, I made some of my favorite sauce, which is a sesame garlic sauce. I had a jar in the fridge and it made weeknight meals so much easier. I think in that video, I was recreating a restaurant meal. And so I made a crispy pork dish with the sesame garlic glaze. And of course, I made tofu for myself, but you could do the same thing with ginger sauce. You can either purchase some cut up pieces of meat, and those are considered convenience items because they are obviously more expensive, or you can cut them up yourself. However, I do like to mention these other products because sometimes you just don't feel like prepping the food or you have a very limited amount of time like me and it's worth it for you to purchase. And besides, if you're somebody that's single and you buy a pack of this meat for nine or 10 bucks, or even they have some for six or seven, you can probably get three to four meals out of it. So it might be worth it for you to spend a little bit more. And it's certainly less expensive than the drive through and then just make the crispy coating for those and then you just add your sauce in. You can do the same thing with the ginger sauce or you could purchase some very inexpensive drumsticks and fry them up until they're crispy and then just coat them in your sauce in a pan. So in this case, it would be the ginger sauce, but that makes a super inexpensive meal. And once you learn how to make your own sauces, then you can have some fun with tweaking them a bit. For example, here I made some sesame garlic drumsticks with an orange glaze. You can also do the same things with meatballs, whether those are meat, vegan, chicken, or turkey, and just add in your sauce. I did this at New Year's Eve, where I think I used some barbecue sauce, but this could have easily been the ginger sauce. I baked my meatballs in the oven first and then I put them in my rice cooker and added the sauce and this was just an easy way to keep them warm and let them marinate before I served them. That's it guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you Sunday, if not sooner, on my other channel. Morning has broken, my windows are open, wanna feel the wind blow through my hair. Which way do I follow? What happens tomorrow? I turn to you and hope you can guide the way. Sometimes I give up, just wanna be on my own. Even in the darkest times, you give me hope. So. Oh.